A hell of a costume. Now, how do you get these? Do you get these made? Are they specially tailored? All custom ordered? made. All custom made, especially for me. And I'll, and I'll give you the scoop on that. Uh, it's the, this guy that uh, has been doing my costumes has got some uh, history himself. He was making, you know, uh, clothes for rock and roll people, and uh, starting back from the Jimi Hendrix days. In the very old days, we're talking about the late 60s, I'm buying Spanish shawls hand embroidered shawls and I'm making for Jimi Hendrix shirts and pants. From that, I made clothes for The Temptations, Sly and the Family Stone, Three Dog Night, John Bon Jovi. I've got the main guy, you know. One day he says to me, I'm small. Well, his bicep is bigger than both of my thighs. He's half a head taller than me. This is a big guy to me. Relative to that game and that height, he's not big. What he's trying to say to me is, the clothes help me to be believable. You shine like a mile high neon light. We got moments left till the world goes wild. And Randy wasn't nervous about his size per se because by then he was used to it, but Randy felt because his size wasn't Big John Stud, he had to make up for it when the bell rang. He was only about, I don't think he was six foot. You know, but the way he would move and the way he would walk with his arms, he always looked like he was 6'3 to me. Walked on his toes. You know, he grabbed the headlock, he was up and in it. I mean, he exemplified the way you should do this business, especially if you're not a giant. How do you manage to see out of those things? Uh, uh, these are, I use these when I drive. Uh, okay. These are my driving glasses. Uh, Having tried on the sunglasses myself, tried them on people, tried the hats, jackets, everything. Nobody could carry it off. No one even looked remotely legal. He carried it off. Yes, this is viable. Yes, this guy's cool. It's the man. It's the macho man, number one. In the beginning, I had to make him a few capes, and then I said, you know, let me make your motorcycle jacket. It's much more masculine. We're back to the fringe that's on this. This is silk fringe, all knotted, hand embroidered and all the way to the floor. So now he's holding his hand up when he's standing on the, you know, ropes and stuff. And you're going, wow, look at that. Is this a, is this a, it's a macho man jacket, isn't it? Yes, it is. Where'd you get it's that so from? It's so cool. A throwback. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Wow. You can see it. <laughs> All his gear, everything, you know, yeah, I wear the tassels when I come out and I just cut my shirts like him. I try to try to copy little things from him. Like make I want to be your own. You yeah, make it your yeah, own. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm trying I like don't want to steal everything from him, but I try to make it my own. I look like a professional. It's wrestling shirt. And awesome. sh wrestling shoes. It has Macho Man laces, so basically I know style. The Macho Man elbow from the top row! He dressed like the Macho Man in the ring. He dressed like the Macho Man out of the ring. Now, maybe you think that's fanaticism. It's a man that refused to be second best at anything. That's what my brother was. There's a part of me that can be a fan, that can be a lover of the art form, but there's another part of me that this is a friend that I lost, and it's a sad thing. You know, if I'm supposed to be above this, I'm not. You know, this is just sad to me. That's all. That's all I could say. Elizabeth, tell me something right now. Who's the best dressed man at the Slammies? Yeah. Well, you are, Macho. Unbelievable. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Not that, you know, I'm born with some great talent. It's just a little teeny bit of talent to make crazy clothes for crazy people. It's crazy and wild, and you might think that I might not feel comfortable wearing something, you know what I mean? But it just, it just comes from here. It's not even a style, it's just who I am.